I feel quite emotional actually sitting here um, getting to see you for the first time because I think it's such a special moment this moment um, and uh, I I am so grateful for what's on stage and theatre mania for having this happen for us because you know we've spoken um, through social media throughout the process of when you got the job and and it's been so amazing and I feel like now to be able to see you face to face I know that the fans will be going absolutely crazy <laughs> and they will be wanting us to ask all the right questions um, yes. and I just hope one day I get to hug you but I'm giving you a virtual hug right now yes. um, oh, so <laughs> so okay so we are here um, because what's on stage and theatre mania have brought us together for us to ask each other questions um and yeah so shall i kick it off emily yes go ahead i'm excited okay all right so okay <laughs> i've got a few questions it, it was like really yeah. hard to pick a couple of questions because yeah. i think we could actually speak for hours yeah. and, it, and and i think we've got a lot to say but um okay one of my first big questions was because I know how much this moment meant to me and I kind of, I think I know that this will mean so much to you, but how did it feel the first time you tried on your costume and your wig and you saw your a glimpse of yourself for the first time as Christine Daae? Yeah, um, so the first time I had the entire look together was my put-in like two days before I went on. And um, it was it was it was really emotional. I I well, first of all, I was like, I have to sing in this corset, and I have to dance in this corset, and then no jokes in this corset, <laughs> and run around and have all these emotions and all this stuff. Um, so I was like, okay, I need to get my like physical body like together. Um, but then it was just like. I mean, it's such an iconic look, um, the red and green and the gold. I also think it looks so good on our skin. Um, and I just I, I just felt really just like happy and excited. And um, that whole day especially was like just crazy. And it was just like kind of nice to have a moment before I went on um, in my dressing room just to be like, you got this girl and like, um, just like, enjoy that before yeah. the craziness ensued of so. course yeah i know I, I can i can relate it's such an emotional moment because i think the build-up for anyone auditioning for a role a dream role and then getting it and then seeing yourself come to life in that moment as the character is so special but i think for us especially the journeys we've gone on to get to this moment and to be representing as the first black women in the West End and Broadway in this role. I think it's it was very emotional to kind of see myself in that position and go, wow, girl, you've 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 done it, you yeah. know, and how special is this? And now let's go out there and do it for all the other little brown and black girls out there who are watching us and witnessing this and going you know what i can do that too and that was very special um and it and it's quite emotional thinking about it it is emotional thinking about it Say you love me. No, I do. go on you go ask me a question okay, okay. so my first question for you is um, um, what was the most challenging and also the most rewarding thing um, during the rehearsal process for Phantom? Oh, gosh. A double whammy think... for you. <laughs> Pardon? A double whammy for you. A double whammy. Okay. Um, I, I think, you know, there were so many challenges coming into getting the role and then starting rehearsals. I think, you know, getting the role 
was one thing, then I had to prove why I'd got the role. And there was a lot of eyes looking to make sure, you know, okay, why in 34 years has there never been a black woman to play this role? And now that's happened. And I felt an immense pressure to deliver and to be a beacon of hope for so many other women who I know want to play this role. Um, so I felt a lot of I guess the challenges were, were coming into the rehearsal process and asking the questions, making sure that I was making a change for a positive way so that representation in that role was always going to happen. And that, that, that came down to things like, we spoke about this before, uh, the wigs, you know, the fact that um, I wanted to really celebrate black Afro textured hair. And how do we do that? And how do we do it in the style of the show, in the period, but also show that black Afro textured hair is beautiful and it can be worn in this show. And I want to represent my own hair and be authentically me as Christine. That was one of the points. Um, when it comes down to, you know, we do, we do a whole point section in the show in Hannibal. And I wanted to make sure that my point shoes were the same color as my skin so that my line was an extension it was all an extension of my skin so my legs just looked long and elegant and it was all me you know i wasn't gonna wear pink point shoes so there was conversations about that then also conversations about certain moments in the show you know um where we spoke about the mirror bride. How do we change that so that it's universally for anyone? So when, you know, the, any Christine steps into that role, that the mirror bride is there as a representation of any Christine. And these are all conversations that were very challenging and hard to have at times because they were questioning a lot about the show that's been happening for 34 years and how are we going to make these changes and how are we going to then move forward so that everyone can see this accessibility for the show and that no one's excluded and everyone can feel that they could be a part of this show. I now do the full bridge cross. Yeah. I don't know about you, Same, yeah. but um, I now do the full bridge cross and that never happened before. It was always other women playing Christine to create the illusion that she was everywhere. But I said, okay, well, I need, I need to play this. I need to play that journey because if I am one of the only black women in the show, I can't have anyone else do that role and play that track other than me. And I guess the reward was the response that it got you know, from people who came and watched the show around the world, the messages, when people actually saw that those, those things happen, especially the wig, you know, there was such an outpouring about that. And, you know, so many women going, I've, I see my hair as beautiful now. And that's powerful that in a couple of moments in, we made such change and we represented such beauty. And hopefully now that will have a ripple effect that will never go backwards because this isn't, an, um, this isn't a moment that is here for, for just now. This is a moment that hopefully will be here for forever. And we won't be talking about it as being the first. remember seeing I think it was your reaction video to seeing you in your Christine dress for the mm -hmm. first time it was like that video like that press video that yeah one. and I was like in the middle of audition callbacks for the role and my, I remember my friend sent it to me and she was like girl like this is gonna be you 
like in a few months? And I was like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> you know, I was still unsure. And I mean, it wasn't a definite thing. I've had a really good feeling and I felt like the team liked me, but, and seeing you just like so excited and then seeing you with your wig on and being like, oh, they gave her an, an Afro wig. Like they gave her a textured wig that looks like her hair. I was like, I'm so excited because if this is like, could be me, I'm also going to get that opportunity to like represent my hair on the stage and like on Broadway and like have my like costume and hair be on the front of the Majestic Theater and have people walk by and see like, <laughs> you know, this is a black Christina and she also has, you know, type four textured hair you know <laughs> on broadway and having that conversation and letting that be normal in all your fantasies you always knew that man and mystery okay right let's get another question in um do you have a pre-show ritual okay so kind of <laughs> kind of um it mostly has to do with like just like frivolous stuff that like makes me happy so like i i usually get like a little snack before i come into the theater so i can like all the food <laughs> all the food it's usually like a cookie from this place called schmackeries um and then i get um i i order from starbucks like i order a, a steamed apple juice with um two mint majesty tea bags in it and it's the tastiest thing in the world i'm gonna have to try that you have to it's so nice for your voice um and so i usually come into the theater with that and like i get there with like maybe like an hour and a half before the show and yeah I just like to take my time like I love doing makeup so that's like my favorite part I just love like yeah. taking my time doing my makeup and like yeah. some music and um and yeah and then I usually just like stretch a little bit before um I do like a little bit of yoga maybe like a couple sun salutations and yes try and like breathe and meditate and then warm up obviously um and then yeah that's mostly it nothing too crazy <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> right. Okay, so my question, my second question is Go on. What is your favorite moment in the show that you are not in? This is hard because we're You're hardly in off full stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yup. <laughs> we are hardly on stage. Yeah. But I. Gosh, I definitely love the Il Muto Ballet. Okay. Yeah. The girls. Oh, they're, they're, I take, they're just stunning and they're beautiful. And the Chord Ballet, they work their butts off. They are just, they are incredible. Um, and that moment, I think, is so beautiful. I think because I have such a connection with ballet um, from my younger years training and everything so to be in a show where I got to do point work and be a part of the corps de ballet um was so amazing because I I never thought that would ever happen so my two loves I get to do in a show classical you can, you and ballet in yeah yeah oh my yeah. gosh oh I'm girl right here Oh my gosh. Wow. I bow to you. <laughs> I am not a dancer. Well, I mean, like I dance like a little bit like at school and stuff, but I'm not like a trained ballerina. So I go on like a little, you know, dance. yeah. But yeah um, I know you work it. I know you I work try. I, I give an arm. I give an arm, but like <laughs> don't look at the feet. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna ask you another question. What okay. is the funniest thing that's ever happened on stage? Okay. Or so, during or during a show. During like during this time. Yeah. So what's the funniest thing that's happened to you on stage? So 
there was one moment during music of the night or after music of the night during the um the morning after scene when so i'm running like around and he's chasing me and i'm on one side of the stage next to the organ and then i'm supposed to run across the stage and he's supposed to like i'm supposed to trip and fall right and as i'm running across the stage my negligee gets caught on the organ and it's literally like toilet paper as i'm running across and it's like <laughs> that's happened to me as well really yeah it, on the it was, yeah it was it was insane and the phantom is like on the other side trying to like wrap up the toilet paper and also like like have this whole moment where he's like crawling on the ground and it was just like it was a mess <laughs> but afterwards we had like such a good laugh oh okay but, yeah. for me oh that's brilliant because i i can so relate because that negligee it gets caught in everything, everything. um yeah. but for me the funniest moment on that happened on stage was at the end of all i ask of you we're just about to kiss um Raoul. Christina Rao, myself and Reese were just about to kiss and we're just in that final moment at the end of the song. And um, it sounded, in the quietest moment, it sounded like someone farted. <gasps> like backstage. Oh, backstage. And and it echoed so loudly on the stage. And me and Reese just looked at each other like, obviously carrying on, trying to stay in character. But when things like that happen, it is just, it is, you know, it I just makes you want to burst out laughing, doesn't yes. it? And I, I don't understand why things like that make, make you laugh, but it is literally the funniest thing that happened. And we were looking at each other like, because obviously we know that the phantom's oh, wow. up in the, in the angel, at the, the, the horse at the back. And we were like, no, surely not. <gasps> Oh, this has been so gorgeous. I, I I could actually talk to you for forever and I think no. well, let's let's definitely catch up again after this, yeah. you know. Um yeah, I just it's this is so special and I I really hope we get to meet in person. Um I am I'm coming to New York actually next August. So okay. well, no. Well, not next August, it'll be this August this, this because August. yeah, I'm thinking we're still you know but no th this august so um yeah we'll have to try and get together we yeah. really will and uh i i just i'm so proud of you um and i'm so happy for you and i'm so glad you are loving this moment you deserve it all and just keep shining your brightest light because you're beautiful in the role and i'm just so excited for you and this moment and yeah it's it's amazing Thank you. Um, thank you. Oh, I love uh, you so much, and I, I thank you so much for for like talking to me, and like I hope we get to see each other soon. Always. Um, thank you also to Theater Mania and Wonder yes! for having thank us. Thank you for making this thank happen. Thank you so much for making this happen. Yeah. Yes. It's been so special. I absolutely adore you, and um, yeah, I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, honey.